among the rain and light, I saw the figure five in gold on a red fire truck. When I was 19 years old, I went over to my grandmother's house. And well, there I sat down at the light brown upright piano in her living room. On the piano were some handle pieces. I sat down and started playing some of them as best I could, being that I was a beginner, uh, studying piano at university as a music student, taking group piano classes called PSL, or Piano Second Language, as we joked. And as I was playing her handle, my grandmother walked by. I can see her looking at me out of the corner of her eye. And I stopped playing, turned and looked at her and said, Grandma, do you like Debussy? And she looked at me, Christopher, Debussy is a fine composer, but I like my handle. Many years later, when she was close to the end of her life, she passed along to me one of these. She didn't give me her handle, but she gave me her Bach, and I still love my Bach. I thought about why a composer might be motivated to write a piece, at least why I'm motivated to write music. Some philosophers say that a composer or artist creates art because of an impulsion, something that sparks them, that motivates them or inspires them to create. I think in my case it's something that I just have to do. If I don't, the world doesn't feel right. When I was a child, I found the world very confusing and I found it chaotic. The adult world was chaotic and confusing, and so was the child world I lived in. And today I find the world still very confusing and chaotic. And when I'm creating or performing music, I find that for time being, the mu world makes sense. The artistic object, the piece of music, is a solitary creation. It occurs within the mind of the composer wrestling with his or her demons and trying to make sense of the good in them and the bad in them. That balanced line of yin and yang, that conflict. Music that doesn't have light or doesn't have dark, it just lives in one or the other, is incomplete. And that is how we make sense of ourselves and of the music. Today I knew I had to create a piece, piano piece. So whether you, someone is homeless, impoverished, or someone is a noted music scholar or critic, the experience is equal. There is no hierarchy of experience, and they are different. That is our humanity. To be a great composer, you must love sound. You must love the individual note. To be a great painter, you must love color and texture. To be a great photographer, you must love the subject matter. And to be a great poet, you must love words, small words, large words, and the sound of those words. That minute smallness, the parts of the snowflake, they, the, the smallest details of life in the world, the bonsai tree, is where the greatest of beauty is to be found to savor and experience those small things, especially in a world that is so fast and so busy today. We're all in such a rush. We're all focused on that which is large, loud, that which gets our attention. And sometimes our well-being depends on focusing on that which we don't pay attention to all the time. That boundary between the light side of us and the dark side of us the boundary between the part that loves, the part that hates, it is in that zone between yin and yang that our essence lies, and that is where the essence of art is created. Music or art that is lacking the light or lacking the dark is incomplete, it isn't satisfying. It's only when there is tension, the tension of malevolence, the tension of love and beauty, 
that is where the greatest art is created.